My name is Max Montrose, and I just built a self-sustaining off-grid greenhouse that actually waters itself and automatically cools itself down. You could not make a simpler, easier, and I guess less expensive setup than this. Uh, and so I thought I'd share it with you. So check this out. Obviously with all greenhouses, there's many different features. And so I'm just gonna go over a little bit of just the initial setup for the plants. Um, what plants? Cacti. Uh, cacti from where? Desert regions over here and also jungle regions over here. A lot of these plants can actually sunburn. And so they get uh, a pure light, just fresh light uh, with nothing obstructing it from about 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. And that direct sunlight they really love, especially when it's not too hot and it's not radiating so much that they sunburn. Just at that time period, about 1 p.m. in Denver, Colorado in early spring, uh, the sun hides behind this plastic. And so you can see that the plants are fully illuminated. They are absorbing all of this light, but it is not direct sunlight. You can tell how much brighter and harsher the direct sunlight is just right outside there. This is a summer setup. So this is not designed for insulation or self-heating. This is designed for self-cooling uh, because it's warm enough for the plants to be in here, okay? Um, now, the plants that get hotter obviously are in the section that gets hotter. The plants that want it a little bit cooler are obviously lower down and where it's a little bit cooler. Um, and even though the space isn't that large, it has its own little microclimates. Um, and so that's why you definitely want to put different plants in different areas. And in fact, why I've got some plants uh, under the table because they're still rooting. Uh, they're just a little bit more sensitive, just things like that. So currently it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit in here. And that's what it's telling me on this one, which is really similar to this thermometer, which kind of hangs in the middle um, and doesn't touch anything so that it actually gets a more accurate reading. And because the uh, cooling system just went off and hit this, this one's reading 66 Fahrenheit, now 64, with 67% humidity, which is awesome, especially for these cacti types. All right, so how does the greenhouse give itself water? Obviously, rain. And it rained so hard yesterday that um, it actually filled my reservoir up completely and overflowed it, which is over 35 gallons. So this thing catches quite a bit of rain. Um, it's easy. I just put a gutter on it. I had to retrofitted in many interesting and custom ways to make it work. But at the end of the day, the gutter does work perfectly. When it rains really hard, the water will shoot so far back that it's actually good to have this lid to catch it. I put an emergency overflow valve, not really valve, just a hose, uh, right in here that actually goes through the fence and waters the sacred plants on the other side of the fence. overflows we've got a drain here which will lead into the grass down to the street that is 35 gallons of rainwater that just filled itself up last night that's connected to a pump inside here which is for the automated sprinkler system which I'll show you here in just a second but that sprinkler system comes just from a regular hose to a sub pump um, about $99 for a decent one uh, also one that turns itself off if there's not enough water in there so that you don't run your motor and burn your machine out. And then just with carabiners, I hooked that up through the center and then connected sprinklers to it, uh, shut it off on the other end. So that's the automatic sprinkler system. If I just release this lever, this is connected to a very strong pump and is long enough for me to water all of my plants with throughout the grow. All right. So I'll have this programmed at about 105 degrees for the automatic cooling, but just to demonstrate the system, 
I and how this is a wireless automated cooling system. Uh, this is connected to Bluetooth, uh, connected to the pump in the 35-gallon 30, reservoir of rainwater. And so if I were to program this so that it would become cooler, it automatically turns the fans on and those fans spray the cold rainwater, which is evenly dispersed throughout the greenhouse. Got another fan here. The cool thing is, is that it actually works. Like, and when I mean it actually works, I mean this cools down this greenhouse very quickly. Uh, so when it does get into the hundreds of degrees, the plants will be watered, cooled down, and humidity increase. You really couldn't ask for a better setup. So, obviously, we have electricity in here because that's what's turning on the automatic fans and sprinkler system. Uh, doesn't use a ton of electricity, but definitely electricity. And I did say this is off-grid. So, how does that work? So there's the electrical box for the greenhouse. We're up on the roof and we have a pretty good sized solar panel set up. More, more than enough electricity to simply just turn on the water pump and the fans in the grow house. Out here in Denver, especially in the early springtime, we get hail uh, so bad, even up to the size of a golf ball um, which will obliterate my plants. It'll also obliterate the plastic roof that I have for them. So uh, I had to come up with an emergency system to basically cover the greenhouse in under a few seconds, just in case we have that kind of extreme weather. So here's my solution to that. Uh, what I did is I actually created a rip cord and all you do is pull the rip cord and you're basically safe. Uh, yes, you definitely have to put weights on top of uh, the cover so that it doesn't blow over, but it's pretty easy. This works with light depping, by the way, in case you grow weed. So I hope you learned something new and uh, that you can add some of these really easy techniques to your growing systems at home, whatever they may be, uh, cactus, cannabis, food, flowers. Uh, whatever. But anyways, uh, my name is Max Montrose and I hope you learned something new.